Thank you all for coming to participate in the final signature turn-in for the Maui County GMO Temporary Moratorium. We are absolutely honored to have you all here and just we want to thank all the petitioners. We want to thank the almost 20,000 citizens who agree that uh, it's not just a good idea, it's already the law. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty simple. It's not just a good idea to check and see if it's safe. It's already the law. It's already in the Constitution. And so we're saying, enough already. Let's check this out. And you'll hear all about how there's this study and that study and it's already been proven safe and there's been millions of meals eaten and on and on and on and on and on. And we're saying, that's great, that's fine, that's wonderful. I mean, that's just magnificent. But what's happening right here? What's happening with our soil? What's happening with our water? What's happening with our air? What's happening in our dust? What's happening to our cakey? What's happening in the blood of the citizens who are living here? When we have that information, then we have something to talk about. Until then, we don't care what research you have until we know what is happening right here, right now, on our land, in our air, in our children. Everything must stop. So with that said, we will open up our ceremony and bring one of our incredible and courageous five citizens who's bringing forth this new ordinance to protect this land, to protect this Aina. His way of life, his entire life, being represented by all of us. Alika Atai. I was asked to uh, participate with this Shaka movement and my presence is to represent the children. It's to represent those who were born and raised here. If you were born and raised here, you were born with the kuleana, with the responsibility to follow the creed, to follow the model, uamau ke ea o ka aina i ka pono. So I stand here to represent not just my children, not my grandchildren, but also, you know, the Hawaiians we say, seven generations. Every decision, every decision that a politician makes Every decision that a CEO makes must also come to what is the best decision on the effect and affect seven generations deep. All of you who take responsibility about the future of our island, mahalo for living here. The rest of the folks, wake up. Not for ready. I know you're sitting in your office and you go, that's right, brother. Well, repeat after me. Not already. Not already. Not already. Not already. No worry. I'm very confident we will make this onto the ballot. We will make this onto the ballot. Now we move to the next phase. We'll let it up to the county council to see if they can pass a law so that we don't have to get to the ballot. And if they don't, and if they don't, then it's up to us to get to the ballot. And so then we will shift into the education, educating the others to understand. They understand. Yeah? Inside, they're not out. If they are fluttering, and they know what is not porno. Yeah, they understand. Yeah, so I'm going to turn things over to Ellie. Oh. 
Hello, Hilly. This has been such a history in the making for me to be a part of and to see the, the new blood, fresh blood, and people wanting to step up to the plate and, you know, get involved. And I think that's what this county government, just life in general, and, and these islands and this culture needs, are people to step up and, believe, and, and stand for what they believe in, no matter what the forces are against them, no matter how big, how much money, how much profit, or whatever is are at odds. The main thing is that you come from a place that is true, comes from your heart and your passion, and that's why I do the job I do, and that's why I'm here to represent all of you, and to be here to inspire and to motivate and to support everything that you folks have been doing. Um, I, I'm excited to see what the numbers are going to be, and I too am very confident because just seeing the energy and feeling the movement that's occurring has been very, very inspirational to myself to continue to do the work I have. And again, at this council level, unfortunately, the whole pesticide, GMO, whatever subject matter is not well received <laughs> as much as I'd like it to be. But in the end, I believe there's been a lot of awareness and education brought to the surface. And from there, more and more people are gathering more knowledge and understanding of what this is about. And there is, um, yeah, if we can pique people's interest to just learn a little more, pick up a book and read it, watch a video, talk story, ask questions, you know, step out of their comfort zone and figure out, wow, are these signs really saying something that I don't know? And, you know, I feel it. And so I'm very, very excited. I applaud all of you, as Alika said. And thank you for your hard work. I believe it hasn't gone um, unnoticed, for sure. And it's not going to go um, unresolved. I think um, there's, like I said, this is history in the making. And give it up to the people to decide. But in the meantime, yes, there's much more work to be done. But definitely count me in to helping you assist as best as I can in any way that I can. Thank you. There's one person in this world, one person who wrote a book many years ago called Seeds of Deception that ignited the entire world around this subject. There's one person in this world who now has two best-selling books on the subject. There's one person in this world who has consulted with and communicated with over 40 countries and their governments around creating the best regulations and the best understanding and education. And we are fortunate that this one person who is the single most recognized face and voice in GMO Truth has joined us this week and certainly this day to participate in this incredible opportunity that we have here to actually guide the world, literally guide the world in doing what is right. So it is with that I bring you Jeffrey Smith. These guys have a tough job. There's a lot of pressure on them. There's a lot of special interests. Let us hold them in our hearts in a way that the part of them which, who knows what is good, who knows what is right and righteous, comes forth and does the right thing. Alika mentioned, know where you're going to the youth. Know where you're going. Well, I just came from Kauai, where they have 16,000 acres planted by the GMO companies. There's 3,000 in this county, is that right? So if this goes on like it's going, we can look to Kauai to see where we're going if we make no change. Where do we look for support? Well, fortunately, the wise drafters of the Constitution have given rights to nature and have given rights to the people to step up and say, when you are not protected, by your leaders, then be leaders. This is a sovereignty movement saying, I will control. This is an opportunity for each of us to say, I don't choose to be a victim. I choose to be a leader. 
This turning in of signatures is turning in the names of thousands of leaders, stepping up and say, my leaders so far have not protected me, have not protected the seven generations, so I will be the leader. This is historic. This is enormous. This is a model for the world. And this is a perfect opportunity, a perfect issue to turn this around. Because this is not simply a minor poisoning that happens here and there. This is wiping out of the health of a generation and with GMOs, all future generations. No one, no GMO company has a technology to clean up the contamination of their GMOs into the gene pool. This is a time to find that power in the Constitution, to find that power in citizen leaders, and to come together and say, not on our watch, not on our land, not for our children. We are the leaders here, and we will determine what we accept in our air, water, and bodies. The culture of Hawaii is such a precious culture. Every time I come here, every time I speak to a local Hawaiian, I learn something about a culture that puts the aina and the keiki and the spirits and the, the wholeness right here as the present takes responsibility in the present for all of that. The entire GMO issue is based on narrow thinking, blinders. Look just at the gene and forget about in biology. Look just at the active ingredient and forget about the entire pesticide. Just constantly narrow thinking. The antidote to that is found in Hawaiian culture, which says no. Narrow thinking is not how nature operates and is not how humans operate. So thank you to the culture of Hawaii Thank you to the people of Hawaii, and thank you for standing up as leaders. Safe eating.